Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to evaluate the integral of an odd function. To complete this problem, we'll confirm that our function is odd and then simplify and evaluate the integral. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the integral of x squared sine x divided by the quantity 1 plus x to the sixth on the range negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the first thing you want to notice about this integral is that you're being asked to evaluate the definite integral on the range, we'll call it negative a to positive a, where a is a constant. So whenever you have the range negative a to positive a, where these two are equal to one another, but the lower value here is the negative version of the upper value, you should consider checking to see whether or not your function is even or odd. The reason it's valuable to check to see whether the function is even or odd is because when you have the range here, negative a to positive a, if the function is odd, you know immediately that the value of your definite integral is zero. If the function is even, you'll still be able to simplify it before you actually evaluate the integral. So because we have negative a to positive a for our range here, let's go ahead and check to see whether or not we have a function that's even or odd. So we'll call the function here f of x. We'll say that f of x is equal to x squared sine x all divided by the quantity 1 plus x to the sixth. So given that that's our function, we now want to evaluate to see whether or not this is an even or odd function. The way that we do that is by plugging negative x in for x. So we'll plug negative x in for x everywhere where we see x in our function. Let's go ahead and say negative x squared times sine of negative x all divided by 1 plus negative x to the sixth. Remember that when you're looking to see whether a function is even or odd, you plug in negative x. If the result you get back is f of x, the same thing you started with, then you know that your function is even. If the result you get back is negative f of x, in other words, the original function but just with one negative sign out in front, then you know that your function is odd. So we're going to be looking for either of those two things. In this case, negative x squared just gives us positive x squared, that negative sign cancels. Sine of negative x is actually the same thing as negative sine of x, and we'll talk about why that's true in one second. And then in the denominator here, we have 1 plus negative x raised to the sixth power. Whenever we have negative x here raised to, a, to an even exponent, we know that we're going to end up with those negative signs canceling, and we'll just have a positive x to the sixth. So, now, when we simplify this, we can pull the negative sign out in front, the negative sign associated with the sine of x here. We pull it out in front, and we end up with negative x squared sine of x all divided by 1 plus x to the sixth. And as you can see, what we have here is f of x. It's exactly the same as our original function. The only difference is that we have a negative sign here out in front, which means we're looking at negative f of x, and as we know here, that means that our function is odd. Now just a quick caveat here to return to the sine of negative x part of our problem. If you're ever unsure whether or not you can simplify a trigonometric identity like this by pulling the negative sign out in front, you can always graph the function to see whether or not it's appropriate to pull the negative sign out in front. So for example, we know that the graph of sine of x, if we look at an xy coordinate plane, we know that the graph of sine of x, if we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, etc., that the graph of sine of x looks roughly like this. We come down at pi here, we have 3 pi over 2, it comes up to meet the x-axis at 2 pi, where this is 1, and this is negative 1. So that's roughly the graph of sine of x. To graph sine of negative x, we can just take it one point at a time. So for example, if we plug in 0 for x to sine of negative x, we'd get sine of negative 0. It's the same thing as sine of 0. Sine of 0 we know is just 0, so we get that point. 
if we plug in pi over 2 to sine of negative x, we'll get sine of negative pi over 2. We know that sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, so we get a value here of negative 1. If we plug in pi to sine of negative x, we'll get sine of negative pi, which we know is 0. And we can continue doing that, and what we would see is that the graph of sine of negative x is this graph right here. And what this tells us is that we have exactly the opposite here. So whenever the graph of sine of x is positive at this point, let's say it's you know positive 3 fourths, it's negative 3 fourths here. When we're at positive 1, we're at negative 1. So it's the same value except with sine of x, it's the positive value. With sine of negative x, it's the negative value. And that's how we know that it's okay to pull that negative sign out in front of the sine of x. So you can always test it that way. But given now that our function is odd, what we can deduce about the integral is that this whole integral here is equal to zero. Just by understanding that the function we had inside here was odd, we know that the integral is equal to zero. And the reason is because an odd function is symmetrical about the origin. So if you imagine something like this, and I don't know what the graph exactly of this function looks like, but let's take a graph that's symmetrical about the origin and maybe it looks like this, right? If it's symmetrical about the origin, as long as you're evaluating on the range, let's call this negative pi over 2, so we'll say as long as you're evaluating on the range negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, you know that you're going to have the same negative area here to cancel out the positive area over here. And so because these two are going to cancel one another, you know immediately that the area from the, on this range is equal to zero because it's the same distance from this point to the y-axis as it is from the y-axis to this point. The area to the left of the y-axis has to be the same but the negative version of this area on the right side of the y-axis and they're going to cancel each other. Your integral will always be equal to zero. So that's it. Because we're evaluating here on the range negative a positive a, and because we've identified a function as odd, the fact that we have both of those things means that we know that the integral here is equal to zero. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.